January 9th, Raif Badawi is getting lashed. The first 50 of 1,000 lashes to be broken up into 20 weekly installments. Somewhere in the crowd, his sister is getting jostled. After lashing is finished, uh, I feel disgusting when all the people, they will say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, why you will say like that? He didn't do anything. And I will call, I will talk someone in front of me, and I will say, you know him? He said, no. I said, you know why they will give him this lash? He said, no. A little later, her brother calls her from jail. He said, I will saw you there. This is first word. I said, yes, I'm in there. So, yes, I saw you. You see my smile? I said, yes, I see your smile. You see my smile? He said, yes, I see your smile. And I see, how do you feel now? He said, I feel pain, but I'm very happy you are in there. She is there, too, for her husband, Walid Abul Kahir, a lawyer and human rights activist. Forbes said is one of the top 100 most influential Arabs on Twitter. He's also the first person jailed in Saudi using the kingdom's new terrorism laws, which prohibit criticism of the regime, raising concerns among activists. New powers to tackle al-Qaeda and ISIS are being turned on them. Stifling change here. Her brother, her husband, just a few of the activists locked up, she says, is systemic. They don't want to be anyone to talk. They will give exam. Raif, it's exam. Walid, exam. Lujain Mesa, exam. Hamid, exam. Everyone, it's exam. To let everyone to fray, afraid, don't want to be talk. And really, that's what's happening now. Before he was convicted, her husband had been defending her brother, Raif. Both men have now been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. Raif's website, Free Saudi Liberals, calls for greater freedoms of speech, himself taking issue with the country's religious police, led to his arrest in 2012, sentenced to 10 years in jail and a thousand lashes for criticizing Islam. But the government, they didn't want the people to take the rights. If they will take the rights or they will asking about the rights, they will open a lot of door. The government, they didn't want this door. They want everything, it's luck. Her own path to activism has not been an easy one. Escaping an abusive father in 2009 to this, Jeddah's only women's shelter that had just been sanctioned and funded by the last king, Abdullah. Other royals told police to protect her. It's when she met her husband, who represented her as her father came after her legally, using laws of men's rights over women. He got her locked up in jail for six months in 2010. Samir Badawi is standing up against two of the most significant challenges facing women in Saudi Arabia. But her struggles have won her international acclaim, meeting Hillary Clinton, Michelle Obama, at the 2012 Women in Courage Awards. She's also the first woman to file suit against the government for the right to vote. A recent royal decree will allow women to vote and run for office in future elections, as well as be appointed to the Consultative Council. And did this give you the feeling that you have more power, more strength to continue here? Uh, actually, no. Why not? That's interesting. Uh, because now... Uh they will punish me. I cannot travel. Because of this? No, because I am human rights activist. Leaving the country to speak at a European Union event last December, she was turned back at immigration. Three years ago, her speech at the UN in Geneva, calling for change in Saudi, got her in hot water. The Saudi delegation there interrupting her speech. Uh, Saudi Arabia, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairman. With all due respect, of course the Council has to give the floor to everyone, however... But, she says, internationalizing Saudi Arabia's internal struggles is paying off. International outrage over her brother's lashes is having an impact. It's mean uh, the government, they will uh, really thinking now about the uh, situation of my, my brother. Uh, all the world they will talking and they will make a lot of campaign for Raif. 
reality is no one really knows what the government is actually thinking. They didn't release a statement saying why he didn't get more lashes in January. It's typical of the glacial change here. But take Samar's case, for example. If the king, King Abdullah, hadn't authorized and funded the women's shelter she hid out in, would her voice have been stifled? Would she have been able to be one of the growing activists today? Her message, she says, is not to overthrow the government, but just bring equal rights for all. That's why I'm fighting. I must do a good place for them. A better world for your yes, children. Yes, yes, I must do that. I must. To live uh, 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 in the future, uh, the country, there is a justice, there is a, a, a woman and man the same, uh, free to speak. And someday, someday I'm dreaming, someday I, um, I, am, I will be old and I will see and I will sit and I will see what's happening, yes. A work very much still in progress. Nick Robertson, CNN, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia.